Right, now we're going to attempt to do some decoding of the, uh, the LED display. So first and first, let's get this turned on. <coughs> now I put the lid on to keep it all uh, stable and out of the way. Okay. I've, uh, I've attached my uh, logic analyzer to this. And uh, I have the software running. So, now let's uh, see if we can get the screen to display something like, stable so we can be happy with it. Because I noticed before that it takes a few seconds to start up. <coughs> and I noticed that this screen would stay on for a while. So, that looks like it's stable. So we're looking. Oh, can't see it. But I just, uh, I just basically wrote what I saw on the screen. So let's um, let's see what the logic analyzer says about this. Hopefully, we can see that on the screen. I'll be zooming. <coughs> in, in a minute anyway. So basically I've set it to 20 megahertz, although I'll probably do smaller, but that's fine for now. Okay, um, capture. Okay. Now looks like a lot of weird activity. I don't know why it always tilts in your It's probably a uh, Tripod. There, yeah, that's a bit better. Fortunately, I said I can't zoom. So. But anyway, <coughs> but I can, however, zoom on here. Right. Uh, a lot of weird pulses, but I'm presuming that these are a digit update for each one. So let's uh, start in the beginning. There we go. Now I've labelled this clock and data. I've also got the infrared wires hooked up, so I can do that in a bit. But we're doing the screen for now. I don't know if that's very visible. But I've also made a grid. I'm basically going to correlate the uh, rise of the clock with the, uh, the logic state of the data. Can't bite my toes. Okay. So, first of all, so we have a one, then a zero, one, one, and four zeros. <coughs> now I'm not entirely sure which is whether it starts. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, decimal point, or decimal point, and then backwards. But I'm sure we'll figure that out as we go along. And also, whether a zero corresponds to on or off in this case. And like I said, we'll, we'll have a look to see what we can get. Okay, so this is another digit. Okay, so we start with a one. And a zero, and a one, and a zero, and a zero, one, zero, zero. Okay. Next digit. Now, oh. they're all ones. I'm assuming this is a blank in uh, one because. There's nothing that corresponds with all ones on, on the display. Hmm. In fact, I might uh, I might hook up the uh, <coughs> the transistor driver pins as well in a minute. I'm going to continue through this. Okay, so we have a one. 
zero one zero zero one one if I'm not mistaken I'm gonna need at least five of these this would be the four digits plus one blanking you know this one is one one then zero 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 and if I'm correct then should start seeing this repeat one zero one one zero 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 yes which is like the same as the first one but let's check that just to be certain if this matches the second one we got then then i know it's looping so we got one zero one zero zero one zero zero yeah that's the focus but yeah these two match these two so therefore one two three four these are the four digits here and uh, <coughs> so if we look carefully at these numbers right you can see that the common pattern in all of them in this case is this first bit here they're all ones the only element that well the only element that would be you know that stays the same would either be the g or the decimal point because that would be it's either g or decimal point here but looking on the actual display which is this the only co common element that stays the same throughout is the lack of decimal point so therefore it must be this therefore a 1 must mean off, and 0 must mean on. So I'll take this information, uh, just slightly so it's easier to see. <coughs> Based on this here, so <coughs> I've just gotten to the top of the screen. So one zero one zero 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 one one. And this must be decimal point. So decimal point is off. Actually so let's work backwards, sorry. So A is off, B is off, C is on, D is on. E is on, F is off, G is on, decimal point is off. Look familiar? But anyway. Our next one. One, zero. Oh, sorry, no. Duh. One, one, zero, 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 zero. zero. <coughs> so that's that. This is that. So A is on, B is on, C is on, D is on, E is on, F is on, G is off. That's what point is off. Hmm. So these are in sequence. And then okay, so the next one's one. Zero, one, 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 two, three, four. The on, the on, C on, D on, D, B, C, D, E is off. Uh, A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E, C, D, E, F, is off, G is on, decimal is off. Three. Hmm. And you can probably guess what the last one will be. Uh, 
Fears on. Fears on. See it's off. Fears on. Fears on. F is off. G is on. So we'll point off. So. That's the screen set. So that's uh, that's that decoded. <coughs> I will show a little timing diagram and uh, showing how that is. This diagram here shows the relation of the uh, the clock signal compared to the data signal. Now the clock, the data is sampled on the leading edge of the clock so therefore when the clock rises it reads the data and a high bit means the segment is off whereas a low bit means the segment is on okay let's have a look at the infrared signals from the uh, remote now I'm having a look at my uh, my capture setup here. Let's see, this time I'm, I put it down to 10 megahertz so I can get a little bit more captures on it. And I've told it to trigger channel zero. See, it's set. Uh, it sets at high. And uh, as you saw in the oscilloscope the other day, that it pulses low when uh, when it receives a signal. So I told it to look for channel zero for. Uh, the trigger mask and it'll be zero so it's uh, so let's start that off it's uh, hmm, look at that pulse from let's try that again and then I will press I'm going to press the power button so let's start it there we go hmm. Hmm. looks like it Try to start again. But, yeah. okay, so what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take a screenshot of this. So I uh, power PNG. Okay, and let's. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same button again just to confirm it. Mm. Mm. Then I'm going to compare these all on the same uh, image when I do that and then let's uh, let's do a num the button number one just to see how uh, how that one looks a little bit Two this time. Well, might as well do a few more buttons. So we'll do button three. I don't know, 
maybe we'll do six but uh six of the numbers just to uh to get us a good good snapshot of of what's going on. Then we can pick out all the common parts and see what bit changes. There's four, so five. We're ignoring the clock and data here. That's for the uh, LED display. Five. And the final button, number six. I will get them all put them together on a uh, on an image, and uh, and I'll and I'll show it on the screen next. This screenshot comes from the uh, the two presses of the power button, just to compare them, just to make sure they don't do anything funky like change the codes as as you press them. But as you can see in this picture, that they are pretty much identical if you consider all the spacings. Now they are slightly different, but the signals are exactly the same, that's just due to, due to the way it was captured. This is a combination of all the screenshots from the uh, pressing the buttons 1 to 6. Uh, I have them all lined up nicely. But as you can see it's about halfway through the, uh, probably the third quarter of it is, uh, has the differences. Now this information I will be uh, taking a few more screenshots off camera and I'll be measuring the uh, the signal pulses, getting it all ready, uh, and eventually I will uh, I'll be writing software to decode the infrared controller. But this is uh, this is what all the signals look like when you compare them together. As you can see, it's it's a pretty consistent header to begin with and uh, and an end sequence.